I want to do a real quick little message here, just as a bit of an exhortation, but also a bit of a rebuke. Um, I see this thing with a lot of people that they don't follow the scriptures. There's two scriptures we're going to go over here in regards to their relationship to uh, a preacher that they've learned from. Let me show you here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 12 and 13. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Um, I've seen a lot of people that don't follow that when it comes to this ministry. Um, Brother Brian is a great man, and I've learned so much from him. And then I see a little while later, and they're attacking me and lying about me. Uh, and the reason for that is because they've listened to the enemies of this ministry. It's a problem. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Talking about honoring them with your mouth and saying, you know, they really know the Bible well and whatever else. And, and you know, you have respect for them but then also taking care of them financially speaking as well, which is in verse 18, For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle, muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. All right, so that's there. But the main thing I want to just say here is this, this danger of listening to the enemies of a ministry. And uh, you say, oh, this sounds cultic. and thing. Well, let me just give you a little example here of cultic, uh, accusations that have come against me. Um, for many years, I've been a defender of Dr. Peter Sturgis Ruckman. Dr. Peter Ruckman, the artist that drew this thing behind me here, painted that, and I bought it from Bible Baptist Bookstore, and I have a lot of Peter Ruckman's things, and I refer to Peter Ruckman quite a bit. And a lot of people say, well, you're a Ruckmanite, you're a part of the Ruckman cult, and they'll send me links to videos exposing Peter Ruckman, and uh, I delete those videos. I don't watch them. You say, well, you ought to be open-minded. I'm not going to be open-minded. Why? Because uh, we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Uh, let me tell you something, a little story. Uh, early on when I got saved, I was starting to get into a lot of the really bizarre conspiracy stuff and whatever else, and I would go and I'd talk to, you know, Baptist preachers and any kind of preachers and whatever else, and I'd bring up stuff from the Bible version issue and a lot of other things, you know, controversial issues. And without exception, they were all just, well, you know, and they'd laugh it off and uh, you're crazy and whatever else. And, and I, I don't really don't look into those things. And, uh, and I'm seeing these guys are all effeminate. They're all cowards. And I was really getting you know, kind of irritated at this whole thing, and I was getting really deep into the whole truther movement. And um, because I'm seeing this stuff, and I'm saying, okay, I can't deny these things. They're right there in front of me, and I'm looking up stuff, and I'm, I'm researching and doing my own study, and and I'm looking, and I'm thinking, okay, how do I reconcile this stuff? This stuff is truth, and it matches things that are saying in the Bible, specifically prophetically speaking in the Bible. What do I do with this? And how can I live as a Christian and go to church someplace when the pastor is too big of a coward to acknowledge the truth that I'm being shown. And the Lord brought Peter Ruckman into my life at that point in time. And actually, the very first quotes I read from Peter Ruckman, ironically, were in James White's book, The King James Only Controversy. And I thought, I wonder who this guy is. And it went a while, and, and I was on Gail Ripplinger's website buying materials because I was just like a sponge, just absorbing as much as I could, truth-wise. And I saw a debate between Earl Kaland, 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 whatever, NIV guy, and Peter Ruckman. And I bought the video, and I just, I mean, Ruckman just thrashed the poor guy. And I thought, huh, I'd like to see more from this Ruckman guy. And I saw a lot more. Uh, just videos and audio tapes and his books, and just studied so much under the man. And the reason I esteem him very highly to this very day is because uh, the Lord used that man to keep me from getting very, very messed up in the whole truth or thing and, the, and you know, all that stuff. Um, he was a real blessing to me. And uh, 
You say, well, then you think he's perfect. No, I don't think he's perfect. You say, well, then you found that stuff out from his enemies, right? Um, no. And, and here's the point. I'm not going to listen to people that attack Peter Ruckman, that just make it their purpose to just attack him and, and just slander the, the, the man and, and just rip him down. Um, I listen to the Lord. And Peter Ruckman, he gives you standards. And this is the standard that you'll come away with after listening to Peter Ruckman. You're never going to come away saying Ruckman uh, is above the scriptures or something. No, not at all. Anybody who's a quote-unquote Ruckmanite will come away with a belief in the King James Bible and say that it's the Lord. He's the one that has the standards. He's the one that's going to tell me what to do, not Peter Ruckman. But you'll come away with a profound respect for that man and esteem him very highly in love for his work's sake. And when, where he's wrong, it's going to be the Holy Spirit of God that will show you those places. And I don't need to read a bunch of critics that hate the man and whatever. And um, you know, the only video I ever watched actually on against Peter Ruckman was from Brian Moonan. He came out as, as Ruckman Wright or something, I think. And at the time, he was pretending he was a friend of the ministry. And he sent me this and he said, Brother Brian, you know, can you please watch this and critique it and whatever? And I did. And I said, you know, you're not even showing the quotes. You're just watching these videos against Ruckman and just putting that stuff in there and saying, oh, look, we've exposed Ruckman. You're not even looking at the context of why Ruckman is saying some of these things. You know, of course, then Brian Moonan's just going off the deep end now. He's a total heretic, but whatever. But I see that a lot with some of you people out there. You know, Paul talks over in Galatians about, you know, I think it's Galatians where he talks about where's the blessedness you speak of. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You know, and that's what I feel with a lot of the people that used to formerly follow this ministry. I mean, for goodness sake, you don't have to agree with everything I say, but why are you stabbing me in the back so viciously? I mean, I've had people just turn on me just like a rabid dog, you know. Unfortunately, a lot of them are swine. The Bible talks about you know, cast not your pearls before swine lest they turn again and rend you, you know. And I've seen that thing for many years. Um, but my, my exhortation to you out there and my little bit of a rebuke along with it is don't watch the enemies of this ministry. If you have been blessed, then for goodness sake, just make it, Brother Brian's blessed me. He's kept me from getting messed up in a bunch of places. He's challenged me. He's, he's taught me to, to search the Word, search the Scriptures more. Uh, he's been a, bit, a great blessing to me. And um, the Lord shows me where he's wrong. Not a bunch of ridiculous enemies of this ministry. You don't need enemies of Brian Denlinger to show you where I'm wrong. Okay? You need the book. And the Holy Spirit of God. And what you're doing when you come out and you just rip this ministry down and rip this ministry down and rip this ministry down, if you're a former follower of this ministry, and all my enemies are, by the way. I don't know of any that weren't former followers of this ministry. What you're doing is you're hurting the cause of Jesus Christ. Instead of just saying, hey, you know what? Uh, the Lord's going to straighten out the brethren out there. and think, No. These people will come out, they'll attack me, and then they'll actually go after followers of this ministry. They're sowing discord and things. And, you know, I'll be the first to admit that I've gone too far sometimes in my attacks on some of these false people. The Holy Spirit of God is going to lead people into the truth. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I have, I'm a man. I have feelings just like anybody else does. Um, the Lord's done great things through this ministry and, and whatever else. And there's spiritual power that He's, he's given me and, and things and understanding of His Word. Praise the Lord for it. But I'm still a man. I still have a body of flesh. I still get ticked off at people lying about me and attacking me. And, and you know, c coming out with fake accounts with my name and my picture and my wife's picture and things... Why do they do that? You see? Because we are effective, and they know it. So, just, you know, to, to you out there, um, there's nowhere in Scripture that says that you have to look at both sides of an issue and whatever else. Uh, that's not there. Paul said, to whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour. Um, when it came to false prophets, he's just going out. And I'm just practicing a lot of that zero tolerance now in terms of the comments. You know, I see people, and you can disagree with me. That's fine in the comments. Not a problem. But when I see I'm being called a heretic and I'm lost and I'm teaching lordships, so you're gone, blocked, and deleted. I have no time for you. None. Um, so please, you know, I, I just, 
I want to just exhort you out there and give a, a good rebuke to a lot of you out there that are saying, well, I need to see uh, what the enemies of Brian are saying and things. If, if the Holy Spirit of God has blessed you through the preaching and teaching that comes from this ministry, you're disobeying the scriptures that says to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves too, by the way. You're not going to have much peace if you're just flip-flopping, going between teachers and things. And I've actually had brethren, and they'll say, you know, brother, I was, I started watching a bunch of people that hated you and whatever else, and, and I got away from watching your videos, and I quit. And you go over to that side, that camp, and all of a sudden you see the Holy Spirit's just not there. And you come back here again. I've had that many times. People have told me that. You know, I go over to so-and-so, and I'm watching them, and it's just nothing. Come back here. And I feel the presence of the Lord again. I feel the blessing of the Holy Spirit. And they say, and I don't agree with you and everything. Why not? Because the Lord shows them things. The Lord's not going to let any man be perfect. You need to understand that. Um, I'm going to make mistakes. Why? So that you don't worship me. Okay? <laughs> so, please don't waste your time watching the enemies of this ministry. If, if you've been blessed, um, pray for me. You know, if you see I'm off in some kind of thing or whatever else, lovingly write to me um, and pray for me. All right? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.